centuries in our church is Whit Sunday. Uh, you can all figure out what that means, but Whit Sunday has been uh, the name of Pentecost for a very, very long time. The uh, service on Pentecost is not particularly unusual, and it doesn't reflect the fact that this often is considered the birthday of the church. When it was born and all of its formed, most of which uh, remain true in the Episcopal Church as in the Roman Catholic Church and to some extent in the Lutheran Church. So our service this morning is a modification of Holy Eucharist Rite 2, which we have uh, modified for home viewing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each other. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, 
Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, that God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in these days I will pour out my Spirit, and they will prophesy. And I will show you portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now read Psalm 104 responsively by whole verse. O Lord, how mindful are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. Then move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. And all of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my Lord while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are various gifts but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same of God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another one the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, and as many members of all the members of the body, through many, are one body, and so it is with Christ, for in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
to you, Lord Christ. And when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus. And to them again, said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, Pentecost is an interesting day. For many people, it, as I said earlier, this is the birthday of the Church. It is a celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit, which you will remember on Ascension Day, Jesus promised that the uh, that the Holy Spirit would come upon the disciples. Then we read Acts, which is a bombastic visitation by the Spirit, and wind and fire and tongues of fire dancing on the, each of the apostles. And the crowd outside hears all of this commotion and noise. And the disciples come out of the, finally come out of the house after hiding there for Lord knows how long to do what it is that they had been ordained by Christ to do. Now at first people said, hey, they're drunk. I think it's an interesting little twist of the gospel when Peter says, no, no, they're not drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. However, the visitation by the Spirit was not only needed, it was needed desperately by these twelve who were charged by Christ to go into the world and spread the word, teach and build the church. And it was on this day that they began that work in earnest, no longer in fear of, uh, of what was to come about actually finally, uh, to all of them except the disciple of John, met with violent deaths. But in that interim, they spread the word across the world, the known world, and built the church to what it is today. And so on this day, we don't 
do birthday cakes and those sort of things, we remember the power of the Holy Spirit, which is depicted in a number of ways. In the Acts, it was depicted as wind and fire. Tongues, now when I use that word tongues, if you read the, uh, the version in Acts, you realize that the tongues is not what is frequently heard of in, in, in many churches as being, uh, if you'll pardon my use of the word gibberish, language that can't be understood, uh, but as in Acts, the different languages of the different people who were gathered there in Jerusalem, which was an international city. And each of them heard in their own language does not mean that each of the apostles was speaking Italian or Greek or, or whatever the languages they heard it in. But they were speaking it. And it was understood. Now, Pentecost was a very powerful experience. It no longer is a very powerful experience in the same sort of way that it was for the Apostles. And that sort of is our own doing because we ought to be about where the Apostles were on Pentecost. We ought to be so fired up and so filled with Jesus Christ that we can no longer contain ourselves, that we need to get out into the streets, that we need to tell people about Christ. We need to show them what it is that Christ can do for them in their lives by telling them what Christ has done for us in our lives. And what has Christ done for you in your life? Or do you know the answer to that question? Or do you need to take Pentecost before you explode with the power of the Holy Spirit which is in each of us, to think about what it is that Christ has done for you in your life. Be able to enumerate that and then be able to tell other people, this is what Christ can do for you. But Pentecost ought be for us a day when we can no longer contain ourselves, but we need to show others the way to Christ. Now like the Apostles, we are all sort of confined to that upper room right now. But Pentecost for us ought to be the day in which we are free in our spirit to renew our own belief in Jesus Christ, to believe our, renew our own spirit, to renew our own love, and to renew our own pledge to Christ, our baptismal pledge to Christ, that we would carry the gospel everywhere. So I urge you to do that. I urge you to get out and do that. I urge you to wear your mask when you do that, but I still urge you to get out and to celebrate the fact that we are children of God, that we believe in Jesus Christ. We're not ashamed of that fact. And we want you to come with us. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with the our version of prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially our brothers and sisters of St. Stephen's Church, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loved us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, 
Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of, our, of your salvation, especially those from St. Stephen's Parish, who you may name at this time. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all of your saints in your eternal kingdom. And rejoicing in the fellowship of our brothers and sisters of St. Stephen and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful Most God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
dear son on the night before he suffered, instituted this sacrament of his body and blood. Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully, in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. And all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for our ever and ever. Amen. Amen. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered on this day. Especially remembering the faithful people of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church who long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for the creation and all the blessings of this life and for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ, the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, in the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out into the world to do the work that you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and in the Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you evermore. Amen. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>